Should people who identify as gay and who want to attempt to change their orientation be allowed to seek professional help to help them do that? A new report considers more than 100 years worth of research to answer that question. This is the Focus Action Update. I'm Stuart Shepard and this week we'll be chatting with Melissa Freyrear, who is the head of our Gender Issues Department and a fellow Kentuckian. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> Hi, Stuart. And it's good to work with you here at Focus. And of course, I used to watch you do the weather on an NBC affiliate in Lexington, Kentucky. She's a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, we've got this new report by the, the <laughs> I want to get the name right, the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality. Uh, which goes by the acronym NARTH. A lot of people may not have heard about that group, but we'll talk more about it as we go along. Uh, NARTH reviewed more than 600 studies and reports and arrived at three conclusions in this published article. There is substantial evidence that sexual orientation may be changed through reorientation therapy. The second point, efforts to change sexual orientation have not been shown to be consistently harmful or to regularly lead to greater self-hatred, depression, and other self-destructive behaviors. And the third point, there is significantly greater medical, psychological, and relational pathology in the homosexual population than the general population. Now, Melissa, you deal with this all the time. When you see this report, what stands out to you? What strikes you? Well, we know at Focus on the Family that homosexual activists and their allies, and a, and a lot of people within the medical profession, um, have asserted these three claims for years. From and the so, other side. From the other side, yeah. that, as you mentioned, that uh, people cannot change, that the efforts to do so are harmful, right. uh, and that there isn't a higher pathology within the gay and lesbian community. Well, the report and the work that, that North has done is such a tremendous help, because not only have we been aware for years that these are unsubstantiated claims by the AP, but now we know that uh, their claims have been uh, refuted by the work that North has done. And you mentioned the APA. She means the American Psychological Association. And, and that's a professional organization that has an official position that is the exact opposite of what this report found. How did that happen? Well, regrettably, the APA has become a social activist organization, we think. Now, let me mention another interesting point about the APA. They say that they, uh, they respect religious beliefs uh, of individuals and that they recognize a client's right to self-determination. Regrettably, the APA sometimes doesn't seem to follow their actions to match their words and that they become a politically correct uh, organization, if you will. Even past presidents of the APA recognize that, uh, recognize this. We talked with a number of people this week with the release of this report, and Dr. Nicholas Cummings, for example, who is a past president of the APA. And Dr. Cummings said, unfortunately, science and professional integrity have become subordinate to what we might call political correctness. We also asked Dr. Cummings if he thought that the APA would recognize this report, and he said probably the APA would not. He added, if they do what they've done in the past, they'll ignore it and act as if it was never revealed, because again, the findings are politically incorrect, what's according in to the APA. And what's interesting about this is you will often hear folks uh, from the other side of this issue quote the APA as if this is all science-based when they say people can't change and the APA says so, but here we find that the APA's position is more based on political correctness than it is on the science. Tell us a little bit about NARTH. What's that organization? Who belongs to it? What does it do? NARTH, the, the acronym that you mentioned, the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality. Now, NARTH is made up of a tremendous uh, respectful and professional group of people, medical doctors, uh, psychologists, psychoanalysts, psychotherapists, licensed family and marriage counselors, distinguished uh, professors, as well as lawyers. And NARTH, they're advocates for two groups of people. Uh, they're advocates of men and women who are dissatisfied living homosexually, who want to pursue their heterosexual potential, and then they're also advocates of professionals uh, in the mental health uh, industry who want to help men and women overcome unwanted same-sex attraction. Now, the second finding in this report from NARTH is that efforts to change have not been shown to be consistently harmful. Why is that a significant point? This is significant, uh, Stuart, on, on many different levels. Again, that claim has been unsubstantiated, and North in the report refutes that claim. Let me mention something else regarding the APA and its standards and its guidelines. Yeah. In 1993, the APA uh, adopted what they call the Leona Tyler Principle, 1973, which obligates the organization to make statements based on research and the psychological literature. 
that claim that, that help to overcome unwanted same-sex attraction is harmful is unsubstantiated, so they're actually violating their own standard by making that statement. Now, the third finding in the report is that there's greater, and I, I want to read this exactly, it's a little science speak, but I think we can get through it. There's significantly greater medical, psychological, and relational pathology in the homosexual population than the general population. Translate that for the rest of us. Because Focus on the Family is a Christian organization, a lot of people we meet who want to overcome homosexuality do it because of, of religious convictions. And we've met a lot of people through the years. They also have read the research, they've read the studies, and a, a, as they've lived, and they've, they've realized there are medical, there are psychological, there are relational dysfunctions uh, living homosexually. And so that's been the motivation to want to overcome this struggle. And I hope also, Stuart, that as Christians especially, that that will solicit a, a empathy and compassion in our hearts, knowing that uh, oftentimes people who are living homosexually are wrestling with a lot of other issues and a lot of other self-destructive behaviors as well. Folks who are on the other side of this issue from Focus on the Family like to make claims such as uh, Focus Just Wants and other organizations like ours that hold this position that people can change, that we just want to corral gay people into a room and force them to change, or they'll say that we just want to pray away the gays if it's not a difficult process. Both of those statements are false, but, but how do you respond when people come at you with lines like that? We're advocates uh, for people who are dissatisfied living homosexually. And if the APA is going to posture itself as, uh, as a diverse organization, as an organization that's scientifically rooted, that's respecting uh, individuals' rights, then we're asking that they would uh, be ad advocates equally, uh, not only respectful of men and women who are satisfied identifying as gay or lesbian living homosexually, but they would also be respectful and advocates for those who are dissatisfied living homosexually, again by their own standards, especially because of their religious convictions, and then who do want to pursue a heterosexual orientation. Now there's one other message in this report that's kind of wrapped up in all of these, and, and it's a vitally important one, and that is it's a message of hope for people who desire to change, and it's a personal message for you. Stuart, I am so grateful for the report uh, that North released, all the work that went into it, and actually it, it confirmed for me what I already know personally. Now you know, you know my personal story. Yeah. that I lived homosexually for about a decade of my life. And as I looked at each of the three points of what North found, regarding that third point, for example, a higher level of pathology, I, I know that that was true in my own life. I lived homosexually for a decade. I also abused alcohol on a daily basis, did recreational drugs on the weekend, smoked a pack and a half of cigarettes a day, uh, was an emotional cutter, and was 50 pounds overweight. So obviously I had a lot of pathologies in my own life. And I I, it breaks my heart. I regret that so many of my friends in the gay and lesbian community that I was a part of, I saw those similar behaviors in their lives as well. Now on that first and second point that North revealed that yes, it is possible to overcome homosexuality and the efforts to do so are not harmful. And I know that personally as well, that 20 years later, uh, that I'm a radically different person on so, on so many different levels. And the help that I sought outside of my personal relationship with Jesus Christ and Christians coming alongside me, the next critical piece was the professional help that I received, the professional counseling. And I'm personally indebted to a group like NARTH and uh, the individuals affiliated with it, that they're advocates fighting for someone like me and thousands and thousands of other men and women who are dissatisfied living homosexually and do want to pursue their heterosexual uh, potential. Right. Well, Melissa, thank you for your insights and thank, thank you for your testimony of hope for so many folks. Out there. We appreciate that. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All right, and thank you for watching. We'd love to hear your comments on this. Any questions or anything else you want to pass along, you can write to us at citizenlink at family.org. That's citizenlink at family.org. Remember, stand tall and be heard.